5, verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now notice right off the bat that he says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you. Now, you can either take Paul at his word, or you can throw out Paul and line yourself up with somebody else. <laughs> um, and that's what all post-trippers do, that's what all replacement theologians do, is they they throw out Paul and they line up with somebody other than rather than Paul. Yeah. I just found out recently that some of these guys, they line up with John the Apostle because John was alive after Paul. Oh. And uh, so they say, well, John is our apostle because he outlived Paul. Uh, John never said that I am the apostle yeah. to the Gentiles. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And uh, they have to do that because what they want to do is they want to make John the revelator who wrote the book of Revelation. Yeah. They want to make John your apostle so that they can put you into the church, uh, you the church, into the into the tribulation. Oh, yeah. uh, so they say because Paul didn't write Revelation and John did, that means that the church has to go through the tribulation. And um, that's just that's just a, a pretty good tactic uh, to lie to you, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of Christians who are willing to be deceived, babes in Christ, who are willing to be deceived, will say that makes sense. Paul uh, Paul died before John, and John wrote Revelation. Therefore, uh, Paul didn't know about you know the tribulation. He didn't know about Revelation, mm -hmm. and uh, and therefore John is who I should listen to because he outlived Paul, and um, and so that's what they do. They say you know follow this man and, and of course then they'll say if you're following Paul you're following a man but then they'll say well, we follow John yeah. or we follow Jesus well Jesus was a man too yeah, right. oh yeah but he's God okay but he's God but he's all God and he's all man yeah, yeah. and um, so you get these guys you know they don't want to follow Paul or they don't want to follow John or they don't want to follow Jesus and they you know take your pick mm -hmm. but uh, Paul is who we follow for doctrine yeah. And so Paul is saying, I, Paul, say unto you. Now, you can either throw out Paul and throw out everything that Paul has to say to the church, or you can follow what Paul has to say, and if it contradicts your way of thinking or what you've been taught or what you think that you know and understand, yep. and you come across something that Paul says that contradicts something that you think you know or understand, you have to be willing to overthrow what you think you know for what Paul yeah, actually yeah. is saying. Yeah. And... Um, so Paul says, Behold, I say unto you, that if ye be circumcised. Notice that circumcision was still in play when Paul was writing. Yeah. Now, a person who is generally going to be circumcised at the time that Paul is writing, this is a Jew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which means that Jews outlived the Old Testament. Right. There, are, there were still Jews in Israel, in the land, under Roman occupation when Paul was writing this. Okay. Paul is addressing a lot of this stuff in Galatians to a bunch of Jews who are struggling with how do I live now that I'm saved? Do I live like a Jew under the law? Or do I live like Paul is telling me as something else besides a Jew? And how, do we, how are we supposed to get along with Gentiles who are saying they're part of the body of Christ uh, when they were considered to be strangers from these things that were in the Old Testament? And so Paul is speaking. He says, Behold, I say to you, that if you be circumcised, of course, not only Jews get circumcised, we know that Gentiles do also. But at the time that Paul's writing this, that's primarily a Jewish thing. Yeah. So Paul really is addressing a bunch of Jews who are in this church of Galatia. And that goes to this other thought that these post-trippers and replacement theology, or these Reformed Baptist thinkers are, and all a Reformed Baptist person is is a Calvinist, undercover as a Baptist. Yeah. Um, what they're doing is they're saying there's no there's no such thing as a Jew in the church age. Well, they don't even call it the church age. They just call it the New Testament. There's no such thing as a, as a literal physical Jew in the New Testament. If you're a Jew, you are a spiritual Jew, and that replaces all other Jews. And because you can't trace your lineage back to one of the 12 tribes of Israel, there can be no such thing as a reestablished or renewed Jewish nation because the Jews have been scattered abroad and they've been displaced and they've been dispersed and there's no way that God could bring together the nation of Israel once more to give them a land because there's no such thing as a literal physical Jew anymore. Well, I don't know about you, but by the time Paul is writing this, they had been dispersed by the Assyrian, they had been dispersed by the Babylonian, now they're under Roman occupation in the land. 
So three times the nation of Israel has been scattered by the Assyrians, by the Babylonians, and by the Romans. And Paul was addressing a bunch of Jews. Do you think Paul went around checking everybody's DNA card to find out if they were a literal physical Jew or not? And so what they'll say is there's no, there's no way that a Jew can come back to full form in the future because the Jewish lineage has been so dispersed and so displaced and so scattered that there's no way to even know who a Jew is. So there's no way that God can bring back literal physical Jews into the land of Israel. Well, if Paul could address Jews here at the time that he's writing, why do we think that somehow in the future, in the tribulation, God can't do something with a Jew? Amen. So Paul is saying, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Obviously, Paul is mostly addressing a bunch of Jews here. He's saying, Behold, I, Paul, who himself knew his lineage. Look at, hold your finger in Galatians, go to Philippians. Very important. Yeah, amen. We're losing people left and right because they've been sucked into some her heretical cult. Mm. And by that I mean something that doesn't, isn't Christianity, yeah, something yeah. that isn't yeah. Bible-believing. I think Bible-believers are not in a cult. I think anything else that's not Bible-believing Christianity is a cult. Amen. Amen. All right, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brethren, verse 1, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for but uh, for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Yeah. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Now, the concision are a bunch of Jews. A right. bunch of Jews. And, um, and, and, well, verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice... In, uh, in rejoicing Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So the, the, the concision are a bunch of Jews who are creating a problem, okay. who are trying to, as we showed you before, uh, cut out the ponies from the herd to make some sort of uh, isolated group. And I'll tell you, this replacement theology crowd and this uh, post-tribulation crowd, what they're doing is they're cutting ponies out of the herd so they can create some sort of heretical doctrine that's nowhere in the Bible, has never been believed by any Bible believer, and they're trying to isolate Bible-believing thinkers into their little cultish doctrine and pet peeve doctrine. Yep. Yeah. And he says, beware of those dogs. Yeah, amen. You, ever, you ever seen those signs on people's yeah. houses, beware of dogs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's where it comes from. Uh, our landlords in the new park that God will will move into, they said, we don't want any signs on your house that say beware of dogs because if you've got a dog we got to beware of, we don't want it in the park. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, amen. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. If i got to beware of your dog, I don't even want that dog in the park. Yeah, amen. Put that dog out, man. Put that dog to sleep. He's been aware of evil workers. Now, those are people. Those are people who are working evil. Yes. Yeah. You got to watch out for these people that are working evil. Amen. Yeah. All they do is work evil morning, noon, and night. Now, these aren't a bunch of drunkards, prostitutes, and drug addicts. Right. Nope. These are beware of evil workers as it pertains to doctrine. Yeah. 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 They are working evil day and night as it pertains to doctrine. Sound doctrine. Yep. Beware of the concision. That's a bunch of people that are Jews at this time that are trying to cut you out of the herd so they can deceive you. He says, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit. Now he's saying we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit. Now Paul was about to say that he is not only a Jew, but he's a Jew that has been born again. He is a Jew both physically, but is also a Jew spiritually. Uh, Paul had dual citizenship. Amen. He was a Jew physically by birth, but he was also one spiritually by a new birth. Okay. Now, nobody in here tonight can say that they were a Jew physically by birth. No. But you are, you are all spiritual Jews by way of the new birth. Yes, amen. So he's saying we are the servants. He's saying we are a bunch of Jews who have been born again. Now, you can, as a Gentile, say we are the servants who worship God in the Spirit, and we are that, 
but he's specifically addressing Jews who are both physically born Jews, but also spiritually born again Jews. Okay. And he's warning them about the Jew that's only ever been born physically and not been born spiritually. He's warning them. For we are the servants which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So he's saying we don't put any confidence in our physical birth. We put our confidence in the spiritual new birth. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. In other words, I can if I want to put confidence in my physical birth. But I'm not going to put it there. I'm going to put it somewhere else. I'm going to put it in the spiritual circumstance, in the spiritual new. That's where I'm going to put my confidence in. Even though I could put it in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. Now watch. Circumcise the eighth day. That's how you do it. If you were a Jew, that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to keep the law of Moses, you're going to circumcise your son on the eighth day. Okay. Because that's when Jesus Christ was circumcised in the book of Luke. Yep. That's when Isaac was circumcised in the book of Genesis. That's where Abraham was circumcised along with his whole household. Was God says on the eighth day, that's when you are going to circumcise your man child. Mm. And that's why Zipporah, Moses' wife, she says, a bloody man thou art to me because he didn't circumcise his son when he was supposed to. Mm -hmm. So Paul was going to tell you, hey, i got a pedigree here that will blow you away. I'm circumcised the eighth day. I'm of the stock of Israel. That's good stock. Yeah, He's like himself to a cattle. That's yeah. livestock. <laughs> That's what he, I'm of good stock. I got, I've got good heritage behind me. I come from a good stock of people. I come from a good herd. Mm -hmm. The Jew. Amen. Not just the Jew, but a Jew who was circumcised on the eighth day. Beyond that, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. Now Paul knew what tribe he was from. Huh. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. That's after they were in captivity for 70 years under Babylon. Then they came back into the land, and then Rome come, and then you've got the media Persia, you've got uh, Greece, uh, and then you've got Rome. And Paul was born in Tarsus, a, a place called Tarsus, uh, Cilicia. He wasn't even born, he was born outside of the land, and yet he knew where he was from. Yeah. Remember, they were like, how are you, how, how, how do you, how are you able to converse, how... And Paul was able to get around the legal system because he says, "Hey man, I'm born where you're. I'm born of your country. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not just a Jew, but I was born in in, Pont in Pontus Cilicia. Yeah. But I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. Hmm. Now Benjamin was one of the two tribes. It was Judah and Benjamin. Yeah. All ten northern tribes got taken into captivity by the Assyrians." Yeah. Judah and Benjamin got taken in by Nebuchadnezzar as the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. So he's of, a, he's of good stock because he's of the stock of Benjamin who stuck close by and, and, and fast with the house of Judah, which was the house of David. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. But how did he know that? Yeah. You would think that all records would have been burned up. Mm. And I don't know if all records were. I'm sure they kept good record. I don't think they did and maybe that stuff survived. But when Nebuchadnezzar came in there, they turned the things upside down, stone upon stone. There's no record of the Ark of the Covenant after the Babylonian captivity in Jeremiah's day. How did that stuff survive so that way Paul has it when he's writing this here? We're talking over 400 years after the captivity of, of, of Judah and Benjamin. Paul somehow knows where he's born. Uh, his lineage. Our old tradition. It, it could be. It could be that. Just that. I don't have any problems saying that. All I'm saying is when Paul is laying out who he is, he's not saying, well, we've been so scattered abroad that you couldn't possibly know. That's right. Paul's not saying, uh, we've been replaced by the church. Paul's not saying, you can't possibly know what tribe you're from. Like replacement theologians do. 
They say there's no way that God can bring the Jews back into the land because they've been dispersed so much. And the, the, the history book has been so diluted and Jews intermingling, there's no way there can be a pure bloodline. And yet Paul's saying there is. Yeah, amen. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but this is 2,000 years removed. Oh, so 2,000 years is too much for God to handle. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Well, then how's God got kept track of your salvation then? Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. If God can't keep track of the Jew, then how's God keeping right. track of you? Of anything, yeah. You're much smaller than the nation of Israel, don't yeah. you know? He says, I, I, I'm the tribe of Benjamin. Then he says he's a Hebrew. A Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law of Pharisee. In other words, he, stood, he studied within the Pharisees. In the house of Gamaliel. He, stu he studied the law. Uh, touching the law of Pharisee. In other words, he was, when it comes to the law, he was top notch, man. He's like, Whoever your top-notch lawyer used to be Johnny Cochran back in the day, you know. that uh, He's the guy. Paul was the guy that knew the law. He was top Pharisee. He, stood, he studied in the best Harvard University of Judaism. Princeton, Yale, <laughs> UC Berkeley. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's at the top-notch of schools when it came to studying about the law. Like a Charles Spurgeon. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so now notice he says a Hebrew. And this is where these guys, they go off the deep end. They say, well, it's spiritual Israel that we were, we become spiritual Israel. Well, hold on a second. What about a Hebrew? Yeah. Are you a spiritual Hebrew then? Right. <laughs> what do you do with that? Paul's not just saying he's of the stock of Israel. He's saying he's a Hebrew of Hebrews. And nowhere do you find anywhere in Paul's writing about the spiritual seed of the Hebrews. What are you going to do with that? And then you've got a whole book titled the book of Hebrews. If an entire book of the Bible is called the book of Hebrews, then who's it written to? Hebrews. Who are the Hebrews? The Hebrews are Israelites. Amen. Yeah, but that's spiritual Israel. Hold on a second. Because Paul is telling you that he's a Hebrew of the Hebrews, of the stock of Israel, but of the tribe of Benjamin. So now are you telling me you're the spiritual tribe of Benjamin? Of what tribe are you spiritually from? <laughs> And what they do, they say, well, there is no such thing as tribes. Well, wait a second. Yeah. Tribes are found in James, yeah. Yeah. in Hebrews, and in Revelation. Yeah. Wait a second now. Mm -hmm. If you're going to follow John, John says there's tribes in the, in, in the tribulation. Yeah. There you go. Right. So of what tribe are you from? Well, I don't know. I'm just spiritual seed. Well, Paul says he's of the, if, what, if Paul's only talking about a spiritual application of his lineage here, he's saying his spiritual ancestors are Benjamin. So who are yours? Yeah. All right. You're right. <clears throat> but see, they don't, they don't go that far. Right. They don't think that far. Yeah. They just find little, little things here, little breadcrumbs here and there. And they try to uncover an entire seven-course meal out of two breadcrumbs. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They find a two breadcrumbs in the cradle and say, I know what you had for dinner last night <laughs> off of two crumbs. Right. <laughs> and where you've got the entire menu mm -hmm. left on the table about what I ate. <laughs> right. I don't tell you. So you have an entire menu of Bible doctrine that Paul lays out, yeah. and you're going to go off of two crumbs left yeah. under the table? Yeah, <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. And that's how these folks think. Yeah. You know who they attack? They attack intellectual types. Yeah. Real thinkers. Real pseudo-intellectual thinkers. 
And that's why they that's why they love Calvinism so much. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because Calvinism caters to the intellectual thinker. Amen. But they don't want to be lumped in with Calvinists, so they'll say we're Reformed Baptists. Yeah. Type in Reformed Baptists, you know what you find out what they are? Calvinist. They're Calvinists. Yeah. Amen. But they don't want to be called the Calvinists because Calvinists burned heretics at the stake. Yep. Baptists never did. Oh. So we are now Reformed Baptists. <laughs> and you type in Reformed Baptists, and you find that a Reformed Baptist simply, simply believes... That everything since the beginning of time to the end of time is just one big solid yep. running commentary of the same truth. It's always been Jesus. It's always been the church. It's always been one thing or another. Go back to Col go back to Galatians. Say why you worked up? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I told somebody today, I said, I'm tired of beating a dead horse, but it seems like no sooner do you beat a dead horse that somebody gets sucked out of your church because they just, oh, you know, they, they just stop believing. They, yeah. They've been sitting there hearing the same thing week in and week out, and now all of a sudden, hey, Pastor, uh, I'm going to go hook up with this crowd over here because they they think more like I do. Huh. What? Yeah, How in the world can you can you go with that? Well, I'll tell you how. They stop believing the Bible and they yeah, believe amen. somebody else. That's right. Amen. I didn't say believe your pastor. I said believe the book. That's right. Amen. And Paul says, I say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ profits you nothing. So here what he's saying is, um, if you're circumcised simply in the flesh, then Christ profits you nothing. In other words, if you are just a physical Jew, it don't matter. It don't amount to a hell of beans. Right. Physical circumcision is not what puts you into the body of Christ. Right. No. So by no means is your pastor teaching or preaching that if you are a Jew by birth right. and you could prove your physical circumcision and your physical lineage, does that make you part of the church? Right. Right. I'm not teaching that at all. No. You get no special privileges in the church age by being a Jew. Right. Amen. No. You better get born again if you want right. special blessings. Amen. If you don't get born again in the church age and you die, you're going to hell, whether you're That's Jew right. or Gentile. Amen. And if you don't die, but you miss out on the rapture and you go into the tribulation, you gotta endure what the Bible says to endure. You don't just you don't just escape everything because you're a physical born Jew. I'm not saying that. No. Right. What Paul is saying there is, I Paul who's a Benjamin, a Jew, a Hebrew, a Pharisee, I, Paul, say to you, who circumcised the eighth day, that profited me nothing. Right. He's not boasting in his flesh. He's not boasting in what he has as a pedigree. He's simply saying, I was all those things, and it did nothing for me. Right. I, Paul, say to you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. In the New Testament, circumcision must be of the heart and not of the flesh. Amen. Amen. And again, beating a dead horse, we've got to look at the references. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. You're getting the worst of me tonight. Uh, oh. I'm living out of a hotel. <laughs> I, 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 we got no guarantee of uh, we're even going to be able to close on our new house tomorrow. Oh. I got a crazy, wicked landlord who's you know threatened to prevent us from from closing on a house. Um, and then you got to deal with the brethren, and you got to deal with heretics. And uh, I'm just you know I'm a little bit fed up. And uh, I'm running a little hot. I'll be honest, I'm running a little hot. And uh, it don't take much to, you know, when you're already running hot, it don't take much to yeah, kind of, and tomorrow's going to be a 100 degree day. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be hot tomorrow. And so you got to please forgive your pastor for maybe seeing a little bit more strict, but 
Nobody you gotta be you. honest with you. I, you know what? I, I don't care. I'm, I expect a wicked man to do wicked things, yeah. but you get a Christian who. You get a, you get a Christian who just throws who just you know throws their hands up and walks out and yeah. says, I don't I can't I can't I can't believe like you and you're like what? Are you talking about? Well, I don't get it. Um, you see the references, and it's happened to good pastors all over the place, and it'll happen here, no doubt about it. It'll happen here. I showed you I think it was last Wednesday. You had that guy that was messing around with the church up in Littleton. If you yeah. don't think that's going to come down to our house, it's going to come. And I got to prepare you for it. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Notice that. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Or if there's no hands involved, then is this a physical circumcision or a spiritual one? Okay, if it's a spiritual one, then you know it's not a physical one. Now, you cannot find one place in the Old Testament where anybody was, was spiritually circumcised. Okay. You have a pastor in the in the Old Testament, there's plenty of references about a spiritual circumcision. I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of prophecies about you've got to be circumcised in the heart, but nobody in the Old Testament was. Right. Okay. Amen. That's why they were still getting circumcised in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. We don't preach physical circumcision in this church. No. That'd be a crazy church to go to. <laughs> I don't doubt that they're out there either. Yeah, you know. There's everything. There's everything out there. Yeah, you, you know. It. So we know that if Paul is saying that we are something other than what it once was, that we're dealing with something that has changed. Okay. Right. Yeah. By definition, that's called dispensation. Yeah. 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 And I don't care if you like to be called a dispensationalist or not. That's what you are if you believe that something was and it's not Amen. now. Amen. If you believe in a change of truth or doctrine, yeah. then you are a dispensationalist. Okay. And you better just learn to wear it. Yeah. Or you're going to do like some and just throw your hands yeah. and walk out the door and say, yeah. I can't be associated with dispensationalism. Yeah. Never. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Notice that physical circumcision avails you nothing. But spiritual circumcision does. Why? Because it's performed by God. It's performed by Jesus Christ. It's performed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Buried with him in baptism. Not physical baptism. We've covered that. Uh, and I've covered that with some of our Brother here, in fact, in fact, well, I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Amen. Now, in the Old Testament, God was not coming down to the third heaven with a scalpel and <laughs> circumcising physical Jews <laughs> on the eighth day. But now... God is the one who is performing spiritual circumcision. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's a change in operation from old to new. Amen. In the Old Testament, you have they call a moiter. Is that what they call them today? They call them a moiter. A moil. A moil. They call them a moil. <laughs> it's a physical man performing physical circumcisions on people. Yeah. Unless you've got yeah, wait, unless you've got Zipporah, man, who got a sharp rock. I don't know how they did it. But it don't sound very fun. No. My grandfather was in a nursing home, and in order to keep him uh, hygienically sound, they had to perform one in the nursing home. Oh, dear. And they don't care how you feel at that time. Oh. And when you're in your 70s, and they got to take care of those things. Nuts. What am I saying? I'm saying it is God Amen. who's performing this circumcision here. Mm -hmm. That's not physical. That's spiritual. That's right. Amen. And you can't find him one time performing a spiritual circumcision in the Old Testament. Right. Or a physical one for that matter. Right, amen. All right. Um, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Now, in Hebrews, there's plenty of truth for the Christian. I don't say. I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist. Right. Yeah. 
A hyper dispensation says we throw out every book of the Bible that's not Romans through Philemon. Yeah, amen. That's what they'll do. Okay. And a hyper dispensation will even throw will throw out uh, sections of Romans like uh, Romans chapter nine and Romans chapter ten. A hyper dispensationalist says you don't have to uh, call upon God for salvation. You don't have to express anything at all verbally toward God. You just have to say some silent prayer in your thoughts and in your mind, some sort of meditative uh, a breathing exercise for salvation. Okay. Because Romans 10 is applied to the Jew only. Right. That's a hyper. Yeah. I'm not that. Yeah, yeah. I love Hebrews. There's a lot of good yeah. truths. Yeah. There's a lot of doctrinal truth for you and not in Hebrews. Yeah. 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 Because you are a spiritual Jew. You have been circumcised spiritually. Right. Amen. You have been uh, uh, joined into the body of Christ, and he was a Hebrew, and he or he is a Hebrew, he is a Jew. Yeah. So there's a lot of truth for you and I in the book of Hebrews, and Paul wrote Hebrews, Amen. by all account. So yes, I expect there to be truth for both physical Jews in the future and spiritual Jews in the present. Right. I expect that. Yep. But I don't live in Hebrews to get all truth from Hebrews. All right. I rightly divide it. Amen. Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Okay. So are we talking about a physical instrument or are we talking about a spiritual instrument? Spiritual. We're, we're talking about a spiritual instrument. In other words, we're talking about a physical book, yes, yes. But we're talking about something more than just because we know that we don't go up to every believer at the time of their conversion and take this Bible and perform an operation on no, them. No, no. Right? So it is the Word of God that we have in our hands, but there's something else spiritually involved it's with right. this book. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So the Word of God is quicker and it is powerful and it is sharper than a two edged sword. Uh, sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the disjoints of the marrow and the discerning of the thoughts and heads of the heart. The, the word of God is the scalpel that is performing the circumcision. Amen. Mm -hmm. It is a spiritual object yep. in the spirit world that is cutting away soul and spirit from flesh. Yep. That is what spiritual circumcision is. Mm -hmm. It is dividing the soul and the spirit away from the flesh. Right. In the Old Testament, it was taking some sort of sharp instrument, Lord willing, and it was cutting flesh away from flesh. Spiritual circumcision in the New Testament performed by God in the spirit realm is cutting soul and spirit away from body. Right. That's what circumcision is for you and I. Amen. Look at Romans chapter number 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 28. Now here's a favorite verse of a replacement theologian or post-tribute. This is the verse they love right here. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. I have no problem with that verse whatsoever. Okay. How many of y'all believe that verse is true? <laughs> okay. Well, how can that verse be true and still be able to say that there's literal Jews in the world today? Right? So you have to say to yourself, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. He's not a Jew which is one outwardly. What they're going to say is there's no such thing as a physical Jew because only real Jews are Jews inwardly. So we, who have been born again, who have been washed in the blood of Jesus, who have called upon the name of the Lord, we are the real Jews. And there's no such thing as a Jew outside of me. Wow. So what did you just do? You just replaced the Jews. Because Paul says... That there's no such thing as a Jew outwardly. All Jews are inwardly. According to them, according to this verse. But that's not what Paul's saying. Paul is saying, don't trust 
in your Jewishness, right. trust in the righteousness of yes. God. Amen. And that will make you a spiritual Jew. Yeah, amen. He didn't say that if you become a spiritual Jew inwardly, it somehow now abdicates all other Jews. Right. And so what they'll say is there's no such thing as a Jew in the tribulation. Oh. And there's no such thing as a Jew in the millennium. All Jews in the tribulation and all Jews in the millennium are what? Spiritual Jews. And if everybody in the tribulation is a spiritual Jew, and you are a spiritual Jew because you are born again, here. Then you're here in the yeah. tribulation. Yeah. And that's how you become a post-tribber. Yeah. Yeah. So they just, what they have to do is they have to erase all Jews. Wow. Yeah. Just like Hitler did. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just like Amen. Stalin tried yeah. to do. Right. Just like, just like um, the king of Tyre tried to do. Just like yeah. Nero tri or Titus tried to do. Wow. Yeah. That's what they have to do. Same spirit. Same spirit of Antichrist. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's crazy. Now here's the truth. You are not, you are not a physical Jew outwardly. No, right? Amen. No. You are a spiritual Jew. Sure. We believe that you that you as you sit here tonight, you are a Jew inwardly. Amen. You are a spiritual Jew. Amen. Right. Yes, that's hundred percent true. Amen. You are of the seed of Christ. You are the spiritual seed of Christ. That's right. Yep. Therefore, you are a spiritual Jew inwardly because God did an operation Amen. on you inwardly like he used to have done on an individual outwardly. Right. Yeah. He Amen. just took the outward things and he made them inward things. Amen. Amen. He created something new with you. Amen. Yep. He made you a spiritual Jew inwardly. But at no time was he saying this somehow replaces all other Jews. Right. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you ask them, well, if there's no such thing as a Jew in the tribulation, or if there's no such thing as a Jew in the millennium, what do you do with all the references in the Old Testament about God regathering Jews? Yeah. Oh, right. You know what they do? This is what they do. That's addressed to the church in the Old Testament. Every regathering there, he's talking about regathering his body okay. to the land. I've got a church publisher's Bible, and pretty much every heading, it says uh, Isaiah speaking to the church, huh. or God yeah. addressing the church. Oh, uh, no good. Uh, what? <laughs> so, so what they do is every prophecy in the Old Testament of a regathering of the nation of Israel to their land, yeah. they will number one make that <clears throat> the church, yep. or number two. Because there are some that do know the Bible. Number two, they'll say, that's all resurrected Jews from the Old Testament coming into the land. Because that is a truth. Mm -hmm. It is true that God is going to resurrect. In the first right. resurrection, there are resurrected Old Testament saints yeah. going into the land. That's true. Amen. Amen. But what they say is, those resurrected Jews of the Old Testament, God lumps them in with the spiritual Jews. Yeah. Because they have glorified bodies. But they do not believe there's any such thing as a physical Jew in the future. And that's how they put you and I in the tribulation. 